What's going on everybody? Welcome back to G Miles World and I know that you guys watched the last video for those of you who did uh, Go ahead and drop the number three in the comment section You would have seen that we did create Kenny Galladay But unfortunately we had to run the ball every snap and play like a Madden pro in order to secure that victory for that game So many of you guys wanted to see what was going on um, as far as what we should be doing um, You know with the rest of what we're gonna be doing with uh, Kenny Galladay now with the way that he's going to actually animate in this game, he's actually really, really good for the post routes. He's good for, well, the in route he's going to miss. I just want to show this really quickly, though. This has nothing to do with the actual glitch that I'm talking about, that EA patch. This is just a weird thing because these guys that come out, usually in the beginning of the year, let me know. I think most of us got a loss by guys that came out with 61s. And no, that this is not a team that the guy actually plays with. These guys were coming out in DC glitching the game. Everybody that you saw that had 61 overalls, I'm pretty sure many of you guys have got glitched. I got glitched early. Uh, we got a few of them banned. I've never seen this name before. So he could just be a guy that's trying to get some late, you know, coins or whatever to try to boost his team. Maybe he doesn't have all the rookie premieres, whatever it is, because he's not actively coming out here to try to win a game. We all know that. So uh, for the most part, with these things like that, if this continues or for whatever reason, this individual is violating the terms of agreement by, you know, you know, quitting the game out and trying to get DC glitches and stuff like that. You guys can always forward that stuff to me at G Myers World on Twitter. Um, you know, I'll pretty much go ahead and see what I can do as far as getting it to the EA Sports team and, you know, having them monitor the accounts. Like I said, a lot of you guys did uh, send me stuff early in the year and we were able to kind of, you know, get those guys that were, you know, pretty much going into every game with that overall team and just straight up glitching dudes and ruining playoffs and stuff like that. Um, you know, we can't get everyone, but we can get a lot of them. If we, you know, pretty much get the same guy doing it and it's like repetitive, just go ahead and use those, um, you know, like the recording features on your consoles and get it out to me or get it out directly to EA Sports underscore Mutt. Start letting, letting them see exactly, you know, what's going on because hopefully they figured out what exactly was going on for Madden uh, 21 so that way it's easier to kind of, you know, dissect the situation because people are going to still try it. They always, whatever worked in the previous Madden, whether it's a glitch, um, some kind of stupid play, people always try it right away as soon as the new Madden starts. That's usually what they do. So people are going to be still coming out trying to glitch and do weird stuff like that. As far as that goes, those are the type of things that is just weird because you can't do anything about it. You know what I'm saying? Like if the connections are don't can't register, you know, who wins the game, who doesn't win the game, it's impossible to do anything else as far as, you know, trying to get, get across uh, with that actual, uh, you know, glitch scheme. You can't do anything about it. You got to just sit there like, all right, cool, do glitch me and we got to go on with our day. But like I said, we were able to get a lot of these guys uh, banned early on. Let's continue to monitor that and see what we could do with it going forward. And then, um, you know, we'll go from there. So now getting back to this guy, right? He's a top 100 player and I played him before and he beat me. And one of the things that he did, I don't know, let me know guys. Do you remember what that, um, what defense was that? I can't remember the defense. It was a nickel defense where the guy stayed on the line. And when you hiked the ball, dudes just ran right through and just uh, hit your quarterback. And it was pretty much stopping stretch. EA patched it. And, um, you know, after that, everybody was able to run stretch again. And you couldn't really just come directly in. Um, but pretty much what this guy does and what I remember him doing is he comes out in that, um, you know, that cover two with the two guys blitzing on the outside. I forgot the name of it. Uh, out of three, four odd. And he pretty much just pinches, pinches, I guess he pinches his D-line, pinches the linebackers. And then he just sits there with the middle linebacker. Many of you guys may have seen this. Um, you know, throughout some of the competitive Madden, if you watch competitive Madden, uh, people realize that that you can still shoot the gap right away. So you see how he's on Shay's ear. I'm going to actually show you a couple stills where he just comes right in pretty much right there. You can manipulate how to block it, but it's not consistent. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the major issue. And then right here, I just wanted to kind of show you guys, you see like how Gonzalez is in front of uh, Bailey. This is the kind of animations that I'm talking about, like predetermined animations where you're in front and then the, your opponent just picks the ball. He just falls backwards. How does he get that far in front of you to do that? That's been going on for four years. Like I said, I don't know exactly what's up with that, but that's just an anime. That's what I mean by predetermined. Now with this one right here, he actually has a pretty interesting uh, route concept with the out route. And then he has a streak that he's, you know, throwing to the outside. He's kind of lead passing it. Um, typical thing that works in a lot of Maddens. I had to play like that in 16, 17, 18. Uh, 19, we ran a different scheme. This year, I don't really lead pass out of those sets because I don't run those sets. But yeah, pretty much what happens is if your corner is in like a general deep blue, he's going to watch the out and lose a step. And then he's pretty much streaking, you know, in the slot 
and he can lead past it to the outside because the safety is still looking underneath about what's going on. So that's why he's able to beat me over the top right there. So if you go back to it and you don't really understand what I'm saying, you can see the concept. That's pretty much what he does. Um, and like I said, it's a general um, baited concept where you use the AI to kind of figure out what's going on and then the AI is idiots and then they just let him go. Now right here, you see, this is the way it's set up. It looks like he's pinching both the, uh, the D line and his uh, middle linebackers or all the linebackers. And then he's just waiting and then just shooting the gap. It doesn't take any kind of rocket scientist to figure out how to do it. You can run it out of pretty much probably most of the three, four cover twos, but I think that that's the one uh, where the outside guys are also blitzing in, whatever the name of that is. Uh, you guys can go ahead and deal with that. But yeah, that's pretty much what he does. Now, you know, it still works and people have done it to me before, but I remember him specifically because he was one of the first guys doing it. So like I tell you guys, I kind of evaluate, you know, every single one of these guys, what they do, because most of the stuff that they do is something that you know somebody has an ebook on it's on youtube whatever so it's not like it's unique to them but when you run into players that have a little bit more skill at the game they know how to pretty much take away what most people are doing and for the most part madden 20 is about the run game so if he knows most of the people that he plays if he's able to stop that run he has a really really good chance of winning so that's what he's supposed to do there's no complaints i gotta get better i gotta figure out all right if this guy is doing that what do i do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to call EA like, yo, patch this. But with the with the nickel defense that they had that they did patch, it was kind of stupid because no matter what, you didn't need any skill. You just, you know, played the D. They, everybody lined up on the um, along your offensive line and they were sacking your quarterback. It was just stupid. So EA had to patch that one. Even with that, we found out that certain sets, you could still run the ball all day. You know what I'm saying? But it had to be the tighter sets so that you wouldn't be able to have, like, you know, two wide receivers. But, you know, you could still have things that you know you could do with it now right here he does the same thing again once i saw him do it again i was like all right i got the d for that we got to go ahead and lock up you're going to see that we're going to change the defense for it because what happens is with the three four bear right because i'm sending everybody and my head coach what happens is the coverage is behind it it gets kind of weird so you have to understand that you know most of the people are blitzing so the safety is looking for like the quickest route you know if you don't change the safety's uh deep blue or his third he's looking at the you know the quickest route so he's always gonna be looking down same thing right here i'm still trying to figure it out like i was trying to you know pinch my line do weird stuff dude was just coming right in and i'm like you know what we're gonna have to change it up because you know pretty much you guys want kenny galladay game plays and i'm not trying to play the game that much so yo if i gotta if i gotta lose the game i gotta lose the game you guys know that like bruh if i gotta get dominated it is what it is let me just get dominated real quick so you know, right here with everything that's going on, I see what he's doing. And you guys know I don't punt that often, but I don't want to give him, you know, that great field position. So in that in that case, I needed to make sure that that happened. All right. So with this right here, he tries to go ahead and beat me deep. Typically, when I change and I go to my nickel, you're not going to beat me deep. You're going to have to do a lot of other things. Um, you know, I stopped running the nickel because I fell in love with the 3-4 bear like four months ago. But the nickel is such a good defense. I don't know why I juked right there. I could have actually went for six if I just had a little bit more stick work. That was horrific stick work, bro. And then right here, I'm trying RPO. So look, this is what I try to do for you guys because I don't want you guys to have to go through this too. So I try to experiment and see. Now with the RPO, you saw how I had a little bit more success, but then now he just came right in. Those are RPOs, right? So with the RPO, he looks like he just has to time it a little bit differently and he can still get in. So the RPO is not the savior. All right, later in the video, I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to beat that um, as far as the tight sets, but pretty much just come out in more consolidated sets. If you come out in more consolidated sets, you will be a lot better off if you see a guy running this type of scheme to shoot the gap, and that's what he wants to do, is to you know destroy your run in the backfield. Good news is there's no longer the sacking of the quarterbacks. You guys remember that blitz. I know somebody's gonna write it down. Uh, I think it was like a bear blitz. Well, no, it wasn't a bear blitz. It was some kind of weird name to it too. And everybody just sat there right over the O-line, just, just laid out, dudes are shooting the gap wildly. So right here, you see right there, you see like how he got blocked right there? That's me, I'm trying to experiment. Now, with the way that it works, you see like how he hopped to the side and still jumped in? So this is strong pro right here. And a lot, what I'm showing you right now, those were the RPOs. Now this right here, um, I just came out trying to hit him with the streak. He comes out, he tries to get that double animation um, to where the computer's gonna automatically pick it again. You know, Gonzalez tips it away, whatever, blah, blah, blah. With that, I don't, like I said, I can actually come out and that's all he's going to be running and just throw it in, you know, with, with double coverage, it's very, very uh, minimal chance of him picking it, except for the last time that he did it when they give him that, you know, predetermined animation. But again, is it worth it to do it? 
Probably not. You don't really need to do it like that. It's not something that you have to do. This guy doesn't have ability, so he's going to drop the ball. Remember with these schemes, when these guys run the trips, when they have the center with the abilities, it's supposed to give them a lot more time. The problem is certain defenses don't care about that center, and nickel double A gap is one of those defenses that doesn't care about the center having abilities. Dudes is going to scream regardless. So right here, okay, nobody wants to block. Cool. We're going to still consistently try to run the ball, though. You know what I'm saying? Right there. Yeah, this this dude Galladay, really, bro? Really? Okay, yo, bro, whatever, man. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that if that's what you want to do, you can do whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So we gotta go ahead and punt again. Because this is a game, like I said, the dude beat me the last time I played. I don't want to lose to him again. So if you ever see me punt, that means that somebody beat me before and I just don't want to lose again. Or it's like, yo, bro, I gotta take this game seriously. Other than that, I'm going for it. You know what I'm saying? It's head-to-head -head games. Weekend league, you have to punt. But, um, you know, head to head, I usually, I'm playing freely, bro. I'm playing freely like I'm dressed in my Winnie the Pooh outfit and nothing's underneath. And the wind is just blowing right through my cheeks, bro. Very, very free. So right here now, everything that he's trying to do is a little bit more difficult. He had the guy on the right that started to run away from him because he had the guy on the hitch. But it was like he probably like smart routed it because he was right at the line of scrimmage. It doesn't really matter. See, that's the thing about the double A gap. If you run U trips, you don't need to send everybody. All right, just so that you guys understand, defensively, you don't have to send everybody. It just works well against that formation. And that's pretty much it. So right here, you see this now? Now, this is the, um, this is the uh, you know, the, uh, the formation that I wanted to make sure you guys understand. This is that strong wing. All right, now, you can use any wing play, though. It doesn't have to be strong wing right here. He just, he just runs right in and tackles me with my two-point conversion. Any wing play, you usually get a lot better blocking. Okay, when a guy comes out and runs that type of situation. So once you see it, just come out in tight formations and still run the ball. Because once that guy gets blocked, he can't really do anything else. You know, the, the, bro, the defense is like, bro, it, it's over. Like, he can't really, like, maneuver and do anything else with it. So that's what you have to take away from a guy like this. You have to take away his ability to be able to shoot the gap. Right here, he just throws the ball in the coverage. But we, like I said, the double A gap is, like, the perfect defense against these formations. So now he tries to run in again. I had it. You saw the way he was blocked and I juked right into him. This is where it comes down to the nitty gritty right here because he has abilities, you know, on the D tackles that Miles Garrett, Galladay, bruh, dude, dude not big enough. He got to get raid sold, bruh. Everybody knows it's coming. The dude's just not big enough. Right here, he just screams right through with a three-man rush. All right, congratulations, man. Have my kids. It don't really matter, though. Hit him with the in route. The dude's garbage. All right, cool. So now after that, pretty much, we're going to go back to the run game. All right? That's pretty much what we needed. We get enough yards. Like I said, we're only down two. At this point right now, I'm not scared of that defense because I pretty much know, like, it, he can't stop this this wing. He can't stop it. There's nothing he can do. So he realizes he can't do anything about it, and he eventually goes and walks his dead goldfish, and he has to go somewhere to do it. But that's just to show you guys. It's a lot of things that get patched and, you know, tuned during the year. It's up to us to figure it out together and to share those comments in the comment section, which is what I ask you guys to do. And we figure out together how to stop it. Because going into the new Madden, you're going to see a lot of people still running similar things to see if it works. After we find the new meta, we'll go from there. But, you know, for right now, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. We will be rage selling. Um, we got a rage sell Galladay. The dude's garbage. He's not big enough. He's not getting the job done. That's pretty much what it is. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. Have a wonderful day. One love, y'all.